I own over 200 books that I haven't read. Yes, I know it's a problem, but you might say it's a good problem. A great problem even. However, I would like to decrease that number to a more manageable amount for honestly a few reasons, like making room for new releases. I love book shopping and owning this many unread books does feel overwhelming, especially when I'm going to pick a new read. So let's try and read as many books for my physical TBR as possible. Also a big shout out to Haley Pham for inspiring this video idea. And this video is kind of a twofer on finishing TBRs. Obviously, like I just said, I would like to read as many books from my 200 plus physical TBR as possible. I would love to get under 200 books. I have a shelf on Goodreads called my physical TBR and it currently says that I own 217 unread books. So I'm obviously not gonna read 17 books in this video. That would be crazy. That would take me months. But at some point in this video, I would like to go through all the books I own and see if there's any that I wanna unhaul. I also really wanna work on finishing my September TBR, which is all the books that I picked out at the beginning of this month to read this month. I definitely think I'm a mood reader. I feel like everybody is. So I'm not gonna limit myself to just my September TBR if I don't feel like it but i am really excited for honestly like every book in my september tbr since i'm in the middle of killer instinct and my killer vacation both have killer that's funny i want to work on finishing both of these i think so my killer instinct i'm on page 158 which is a little over halfway through the book it's a pretty short book just under 300 pages and i I'm feeling very love-hate about this book. Sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I hate this book. Why don't I DNF it right now? But then some moments I'm like, wait, it is kind of bad, but also it's really fun. Our main character discovers a dead body in the vacation rental she's staying at. And then there's like a romance with her and the bounty hunter. And I don't know. See, this is the thing about owning so many unread books. It's like, if I'm really not loving it, why continue it when there's so many other books I own that I'm sure many of are gonna be four and five stars. So I'm in debate right now if this is gonna be a DNF or not. And then definitely not gonna DNF Killer Instinct. This is the second book in the natural series. I'm on page 54 and I'm really loving it. We're just kind of in the setup of the novel right now, but I love the natural, so I can't imagine that I'm not gonna really love this book. So let's read this book for now and then I'll figure out what I wanna do with my killer vacation. I think this series has such a fun plot concept. Basically, we have several teens who are recruited by the FBI because they have special abilities. Like our main character, Cassie, is really good at reading people. Another girl, Leah, can detect lies. So different abilities like that, that can help solve crimes. So they're basically a teen cold case task force. And this book is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, who wrote The Inheritance Games, which I loved. And I honestly forgot how much I love that series until I picked up this series. And I was like, wait, it is so, so nice to be back in one of her books. There's also a love triangle. I'm a teen Dean girl, but I'm curious if any of you guys have read the series. Are you team Michael or- oh! Are you team Michael or team Dean? Do you want to sit on my lap? Come on. Yes. Okay, he's just going to knead and walk around. Oh, for like five minutes. Also, we are currently reading the first book in the series, The Naturals, in my book club. And the day that this video is going live, we're actually gonna be switching to reading a book of short stories called No Ordinary Love for a week in my book club. It's completely free to join my book club and everyone will get a free ebook copy of No Ordinary Love, which is so cool. And this is all thanks to Hinge and Dazed who partnered to release this book of short stories and also sponsored this video. This anthology has six stories of real couples who met on Hinge. And I love that the short stories are not your typical like fairy tale romance. They're real and messy and raw, but also beautiful stories that kind of celebrate those like perfectly imperfect moments at the beginning of a relationship. And one of my favorite short stories in the book is called Work in Progress by Roxane Gay. I love that it showed the couples meeting and having those really great first moments, but also dealing with conflict in the early stages of the relationship. There's also one moment in the beginning where I was like giggly swooning. Our female main character, Chanty, loves flowers and he, builds her Lego flower so that she can always have flowers with her. Also, I don't know if I've ever shared this or not before, but me and my boyfriend Danny met on a dating app. So it's also really cool just to hear about people falling in love and meeting in the same way that me and my boyfriend did. And you can get your free copy and read with us over at my book club on Fable. All you have to do is click the link in the description to join my book club if you haven't already joined. And then comment in the club to get your free ebook added to your Fable bookshelf. And then we're all going to read and discuss the book together. So I'm very excited to share all my thoughts with you guys because I truly loved all of these stories. All right, and with that, let's get back to reading. Thank you. 
it is the gloomiest day out which is really setting the mood for reading in general i love reading when it's like rainy or gloomy but especially for a mystery I just hit page 164. We're getting to find out a lot more about all of the teens in the FBI program, which I really love. They all have such interesting backstories. We're especially finding out a lot about Dean, and I love Dean, but also he has a tough backstory, so my heart just like hurts for him. And the mystery is definitely picking up. I'm on page 298, so I think I have like 75-ish pages left, and we don't have a lot of answers yet, but we did get one big reveal and like twist recently that really intrigues me, and obviously we're gonna find out hopefully everything in this last 75 pages. Also, I did stay up very late last night reading because I couldn't put it down. I just finished the book and it definitely ended with a big setup for book three. Okay, final rating. I think I'm gonna say 4.5 stars, but I honestly might change my rating for the naturals to five stars. I originally gave that book 4.5, but I think it's a five star series overall, but I did like the naturals a tiny, tiny bit more just because the twists in that book were crazy, but the twists in this book, also so good. Also the love triangle, the love triangle. I am so torn up about it. I don't think I've ever read a love triangle before where I really cared about both guys so much. Like I think, like I said, I'm ultimately a Dean girl, but I just don't want any of them to get hurt because they've both been through so much struggle in their life and they both just deserve such happiness and I love them both so much. So like anytime any progress is made in a love triangle with either guy, I'm like so happy and giddy, but also feel so bad for the other one. But yeah, so good and great twists. Killer Instincts done. Gonna turn it this way. So one out of 10 books from the September TBR completed. my killer vacation i need to decide what to do since i am in the middle of it honestly now that it's been like 24 hours since i last picked it up i don't really know if i have very much motivation to finish it i posted on goodreads saying that i was thinking about dnfing it and i think there was like 20 plus comments being like you should dnf it like i didn't really care for it or like the ending so i think i'm gonna dnf my killer vacation it just felt like so cheesy cringy okay like palette cleanser if you're just looking for something really light without much depth that's like you know kind of cheesy but also a little fun but also i do feel like i have so many other just like light fun palette cleanser books that are a lot better than this one so it doesn't really feel worth continuing i'm kind of curious about the ending though because there is a murder mystery element to it i don't know who the killer is so i might look it up actually because i'm curious who is the killer in my killer vacation oh i don't think i really knew who this character was yet i don't think so so that doesn't really mean much to me but yeah i think i'm gonna say two stars It is currently Monday. The last time I saw you guys was on Friday. And over the weekend, I really debated what book I want to start next. Since I read Killer Instinct and My Killer Vacation, I know I didn't love My Killer Vacation, but both were like murdery fun books. And it is only September, but my brain is in Halloween mode. So over the weekend, I read the first chapter of Wild is the Witch and Phantasma. Whenever I'm feeling really indecisive on what book to pick, I love reading the first chapter of each book. It gives you such a good idea of like the writing style and kind of a basis for the world and like which one is going to hook you right away. So I did that. And and I ended up choosing to start Wild as the Witch next. Phantasma, I do think I'm really in like this book. It has been described as being very much like Caraval, but darker and adult and spicy, which honestly sounds like it could not be more perfect for my reading taste. But when I did read the first chapter, I was definitely getting the sense that it would be darker and more serious. And I think I am in the mood for a little bit more of like a lighter fun book. 
I actually started this book over the weekend. I'm on page 76 and I really like the plot. It has a trope that I love, my favorite romance trope ever, enemies to lovers. Basically, Iris is a witch and she works at a wildlife refuge that her mom owns with Pike, who she finds very annoying. They bicker all the time and he hates witches. He hates witches, but he does not know that she's a witch. So yeah, very enemies to lovers. And then she, okay, she creates a curse that she doesn't intend to actually cast on him. But then this owl like swoops in and like grabs the curse and flies away with it. And so if that curse like gets unleashed, that would be really bad for him. Like he may die. So she needs to track down this owl to get the curse back. And she's tracking it down under the guise that like she is going to get the owl to like bring back to the wildlife sanctuary. So he goes with her as her coworker, but he has no idea the real reason that they're tracking down this owl. So I'm very edge of my seat because just like so much could go wrong on this journey. He could find out that she's a witch. He could find out that she like kind of tried to curse him and they hate each other and they're gonna have like so much forced proximity on this journey. I like how this book, like I was saying, is cozy and cute, but also so many things could go wrong. And I think I'm gonna set a one hour timer for reading. I feel like we all oftentimes like get distracted while reading, like I will get on social media part way through reading, etc. But I feel like when I set a timer, I stick to it pretty well. So this is something I've been loving doing recently to just like make myself read without distractions. One hour starting now. One hour up, I am on page 125, so 50 pages in an hour, pretty good for me. And yeah, I really like this book, it's really cute. Something that I think is quite unique about Rachel Griffin's books, nature is a really big part of the books. And I always think it's really fun when I read a book and discover something new that I like. Because I've read so many books, I feel like that's kind of a rare feeling for me. And the last book that I read by her, Bring Me Your Midnight, nature was a big part of the magic system. And then in this one, nature is like also a big part of the magic system. Very like descriptive, like I can just picture the setting so well. And now I think I'm gonna switch to the audiobook and finally go through all my books and see if there's any that I want to unhaul. Specifically, I have a shelf right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. And I actually forgot this shelf existed. It's kind of hidden by my white chair so I never see it and there's just a ton of books back here that have been back here for probably about a year and I have no idea what books are down here so I need to figure out if these are ones that I actually want to read or not you make me feel oh so warm. you see me I am in love I feel so loved all the time I'm literally only on deciding on the first book and this is so hard. There's so many books that I do think I would enjoy that I think would be good but I just see them being more like three, three and a half star reads which is still enjoyable but I also own so many books that are predicted five star ratings for me and I never get to them because I'm always going to prioritize the books that I think are going to be five stars. So it's like do I keep keeping my babies? I don't know. I'm very happy to announce that I found, drum roll, do, 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 29 books on haul. That's way more than I thought. I looked through, like I said, that bottom shelf and like my book carts and everything. And yeah, they were some tough choices. Like I said, a lot of these have just been on my maybe list for so long, but it's like, if I own over 200 books, am I realistically gonna ever get to my bottom 30 want to reads? So I was like, it's time to make the tough call and unhaul. I'm not even gonna show you guys which ones I'm unhauling this video because I feel like it's just fun to make a whole video dedicated to unhauling books. But my physical TBR is decreasing, which was the whole point of this video. And it's very exciting. It feels very satisfying. We just had a trope introduced that I did not expect and I'm like very giddy about this. Good morning. It's Tuesday 
And I don't think I've ever filmed in here before. We have a two bedroom apartment and this is Danny's office slash the guest bedroom. And lately I've been really enjoying reading in here. I just love like the windows. It feels like so cozy, like a cozy little corner. And today Danny had to go in person into his office. So just me home alone at the apartment all day. Also, I stayed up till like 12.30 last night reading. I'm on page 235, so almost done. And we're definitely at the point in the book where absolutely everything is going wrong, which is like the best part of the book for the reader because I'm like so engrossed and I have no idea how they're gonna fix everything but obviously like the worst part of the book for the characters and I'm so happy that in this video I've had two reads so far that have made me like stay up late reading that's like the best feeling to me where I'm like I cannot put this book down even though I'm so tired I will power through the tiredness to keep reading and that happened with Killer Instinct and now this book you make me feel oh so another book done i loved it uh i think i'm gonna say 3.75 stars but a lot of times i feel like if i give something in the three stars people will think that means it's like just like an okay book i really like this book like i think it was way better than just okay this is my second rachel griffin book and i'm a fan she has one other book that i haven't read that i really want to go read now i just feel like her books have so much going on like we have the magic system the witch world family issues a part of the plot which i really like we have the romance and then we also have like some plot going on with like the magic and fantasy i the only reason i'm saying 3.75 stars is i do think it was a little lighter it had depth to it but more just kind of a younger read i guess a little bit is how i would say it lighter in the way that young adult books can sometimes be but also that is often what i love about young adult books another book going on the completed shelf And then I posted a poll on my YouTube community tab asking guys which book I should read next. On the poll was Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, Say You Swear by Megan Brandy, and A Novel Love Story by Ashley Poston. And drumroll, do, 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 A Novel Love Story won. It won by like quite a high percentage, which I was actually surprised about. I thought the books would be like pretty tied. Back to the reading corner to start this book. I have said this, I think, in like three videos so far, but this book it literally has, I think, the coolest, most unique plot ever. Basically, our main character, her car breaks down and she like wanders into this small town, and the small town is the town from the book she's reading. And I think that is so cool, so adorable, and I feel like it really fits with Ashley Poston books because she had The Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip, which both of those had a little bit of magic in them. And I'm so excited, I'm so excited for the moment in the book when she realizes that it's the town from the book she's reading. Like, is she gonna be confused, excited, scared, like all of the above? I don't know, but I am excited for that moment. I decided to start off by listening to the audiobook while playing Stardew Valley. I've been very into cozy games the last several months, specifically Stardew Valley, so if anyone has any other cozy gaming recs, let me know because they're so fun. I am on page 84 and we have gotten to the point where Elsie realizes that the town she's in is from her favorite romance novel and she's more shocked excited than shocked like confused. Like I guess I would be excited too but I think I would more so be like what in the world is going on? Like how is this possible? This is crazy but she's just excited and that feels like a little unrealistic to me but i am liking that the book very much feels like a love letter to romance lovers which is me is us so that's like very fun to read about i am on page 178 and okay having two like mixed thoughts i think i'm loving the town is so cute and the fact that she's like meeting all her favorite book characters also why she's there i love that we kind of have this mystery element of like we don't know how or why she's able to go to this fictional bookish town con the thing i'm not loving is the pacing feels like a little weird to me with the romance up until page like 140 ish we really didn't have much interaction between our two main characters so i was kind of like when is the romance coming into play and now we're getting a lot of interaction with them and it seemed like we like fully jumped into the romance but like very quickly i kind of feel like i missed that chunk of them just like flirting getting to know each other like banter that part like we went from like zero to 100 a little i just don't feel like i know very much about our male love interest yet and i don't feel like they know each other very much at all which kind of makes it a little harder for me to root for them when i'm like okay wait would they be good together or not i just don't really know and i was just taking an instagram photo in this dress in my reading corner with my book that's why i'm looking a little fancy but i think i'm gonna change clothes and go sit at barnes and noble and read just like reading this book since it takes place in a books 
fictional town. I kind of want to read it like surrounded by other books. Also because our male love interest, he owns a bookstore. So like a lot of the time we're in his bookstore. So I'm going to change clothes into something more casual and then let's go. I have arrived at Barnes. Also, I feel like this is a good test to see if I have enough self-control to enter this bookstore just to sit and read and not buy any books. I don't think I'm going to be on like a long book buying ban, but I just want to be on a mini book buying ban at least for the month to really focus on reading the books I already own. Obviously, that's like the whole point of this video. So this is a good self-control test. Happy Friday. It's two days since I last saw you guys and I have just a little more than 20 pages left so I'm almost done and I've been feeling very like mixed about this book. Like something will happen and I'm like, oh, I'm loving the book and then something else will happen and I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm loving it and then like loop that. But yeah, basically there's kind of like a plot twist or reveal in this book and I really liked the reveal slash twist. I guess part of it, but not all of it. So I liked that that did kind of surprise me and I feel like the twist had a lot of heart to it, which I really liked. And then we got to the third act conflict and I'm angry. It just happened so suddenly and so out of the blue. I would say I'm not super loving the romance plotline that much. I finished the book and I think I'm gonna say three stars. The romance, like, I don't know. Like I was saying the pacing is just so weird to me in this book and then also like from the time they meet to the time they're like really falling in love i think it's like five ish days total and that's kind of a book ache of mine is when like the romance develops too quickly and i just didn't really feel any like chemistry or tension or longing i did really like the plot with the fictional town like the fictional book town was so cool and cute and cozy like what a book lover's dream and then i really loved the way our main character like helps all the book characters with their problems that's something i also think was cool about the book is because when she enters this fictional book town it's after the characters have already gotten their like romance happy ending in the books and often in romances or like with every romance pretty much they end with like this perfect happy ending which like i love as a romance reader but i never really thought about how it's like not quite real life like even if your romance your relationship is like going amazing you still have like problems and hardships so i do like that we got to see that these romance book characters had a happy ending but they still continue to like relationship problems or things they have to work through their life isn't perfect just because they got their romance book happy ending and i liked that sentiment a lot but this book did get me thinking about like okay if i could visit or live in a fictional book world or book town like which one would i live in and my first instinct is to say a fantasy world because obviously like that world is just so different from our own and be so cool but also i think i am not cut out for a fantasy world like i don't have fantasy book character skills yeah i don't know that i could really survive well in a fantasy world but i would want to go somewhere with like magic or something so i think i'm gonna say caraval because that book has like magic and fantasy but it's a little more based in our world and i would love to attend caraval that'd be so cool it's like if you haven't read the book it's like a magical competition circus performance thing and i kind of think i would be good at the caraval competition comment below i would love to know like what fictional book world or town would you go to i'm actually so intrigued like what your answer would be because i'm sure there's like five billion cool fictional book places anyway that is every book that i'm completing in this video so i checked four books off my physical tbr and then i unhauled 29 books which is a lot so i believe my physical tbr now sits at 184 books which is amazing. That is so much progress. And yeah, let me know if you guys like this video. I feel like it could be fun to do this as a video series where I'm like continuously trying to just read as many books as I possibly can in a week and also 
continue to like go through the books I own, see if there is any I want to unhaul. It would make me feel so much better to have a smaller physical TPR because I also get so excited about new releases coming out and I want to read them immediately, but then I'm like, oh, but I do own so many books. Maybe I shouldn't go out and immediately buy every single new release. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.